All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to do a quick overview of subs on an aux and how to maximize it. Um, I'm basically going to take Reaper and try to replicate uh, running subs on an auxiliary. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and play a full band. And you're going to see here what the master level is. That's all the media being sent to the bus. I set it up so that it is set at, well, it will, it will clip eventually, but I did that on purpose. So now let's go ahead and solo the kick. So this would be like if we sent the kick only to the, uh, the sub on the Nox. And we'll see really quickly that we have, eh, we've gained a little over 7 dB, almost 8 dB worth of headroom, available space left that we could turn this kick up if we wanted to. All right, so now let's go ahead and band limit the media that would be getting to that uh, mix by introducing a low pass filter. This one's set at about 260 hertz. So this is now the media that the input of your self-powered sub and or even your passive sub would see. So this is what would be getting to the input of the amplifier. And really quick, you'll notice that uh, we gained a little bit more actually. Now we're sitting at about minus 9 dB. So we could turn this kick up 9 dB now if we wanted to. I haven't changed anything else in this mix. So that's a fair amount of volume that we can turn up. Now I'm going to explain why getting the vocals out of the sub out of the subs is a great idea. A lot of people believe that the high pass filter is going to do enough of a job. I'm going to show you otherwise. <clears throat> so here is the vocal. It's just this one vocal now uh, soloed. I have the high pass set at 80 hertz right there and this is the information that is getting into the into the main PA or mix. This is everything right there. You can see there's still about a fair amount of low end material there. And if we go back over here, this is what would be getting into the input of the amplifier of the sub. Um, quite a bit. We're sitting at about negative nine. So let's go ahead and band limit that. Let's turn on the low pass filter again. Can't really hear much, but this is what's still trying to be amplified by that sub. The subwoofer is still trying to make this amount of media go through it in one way or another. Um, minus 12 dB and minus 10. So let's add the kick in there. Uh, so it goes up to minus 7. So we still have 7 dB roughly that we could turn it up. But there's only a few dB difference between the two. Um, not a whole lot. So as you can see, let's go ahead and unmute the uh, vocal. Uh, or mute the vocal, I should say. Um, so now this is just kick only again, and we're at about negative nine. So we've gained an easy couple few dB just by getting the vocals out of the subs on the Nox. So let's go ahead and add some bass guitar back in there as well. Um, obviously this will change a little bit as you, as you add more and more. Obviously you're going to lose more and more headroom, but uh, bass and kick are typically the things that you're going to have in there, and in doing so... We're sitting at about minus 7.7, .7, minus 7.5. So we still have a solid 7 dB that we could turn, <coughs> excuse me, the kick and the bass up if we wanted. So that's a significant amount of volume just by doing that trick alone. So you're saying, well, what if I can't run the low pass filter prior to the send going to my uh, subwoofer? Well, not too bad. You are going to lose some headroom, obviously. Um, but you still have four, a little over four dB that you could potentially turn up. So it is beneficial to have the, the, the bandwidth limited to the sub. All right, so just some food for thought.